Place now, do you see it? Huh? It doesn't go on Broward. Like, I don't know. I was saying on Wild Torah. Uh, on Wild Torah, it's only audio. Right, no, but it's, it's all videos all over. They it's don't take a place. Video? No. Uh -huh. no. Right. But the video's up too. Mm -hmm. The video's up too. It's in a different place. Who did you send that link to the channel? I set up the channel. Well, it's on the WhatsApp thing. It's, there. it's on their I have to already? Mm -hmm. It's on the OUF also? Why you? No, I'm just why you act? Only audio. But in our WhatsApp right. group, so there's the audio and the video. Oh, so on, on two different links. Why you tell it's only the audio also? They only have audio. You can also subscribe to a YouTube channel that every time the new one's posted, it'll send you an email. So I can send out that link. Yeah, yeah, you should do that. Okay. Um, I want to go further in Yudzayim, Eric Yudzayim, but I want to, let's just do um, a little bit of a, a, a Chazar of Harsinai, also because it's Arab Shulis, and also because it's Nogaya. Um, and also we spoke on Chavez because that wasn't part of the uh, this year, so I just want to get the Rashi Prokim here. And the Rashi Prokim are like this, that if you'll look at the whole story of Maimon Harsinai, Clear, clear from the Psukim. Um, what happened was, the chronology of it was, that Kla Yisrael was sitting, standing, Betach Sahar, the bottom of the mountain. Um, Moshe Rabbeinu was standing there with them. Moshe Rabbeinu was not on Har Sinai at this point. They were at the foot of Har Sinai. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Started to say, Sarah said, Dibros. And putting together all the different Chazalim that we learned, um, Kodesh Baruch Hu said the first two Dibros, Shtayim Zushamati, so the first two Dibros, and then I guess Klai Yisrael or the elders of Klai Yisrael um, were Mafsik in the middle, and they said, We don't want to hear from Hashem, Penomus, you may die. And we want to hear it from Moshe. So Moshe started to say, and he said the rest of the eight Dibrois. <coughs> we learned to Medrash and Shir Hashirim says that that Gufa, they had Charat, and now they were missing that, hearing straight from Hashem. Moshe Rabbeinu said, no, you can't hear it straight from Hashem, you have to wait till Moshiach comes. So we explained that, um, first of all, it's very significant that, that Moshe and Klai Yisrael were at the bottom of the heart. This wasn't something that was coming from the hill. You know, this was something that was all on the bottom of the mountain. And as the Rambam says in Mar Nebuchim, it's not philosophically tenable to say that God spoke like we speak. That's not what it means. Um, what it means is it was a Nevo. Everybody had a Nevo. Uh, so we were, all, we were all prophets for the first two of the Ten Commandments. Again, this was all like Tersh of Alpet. Nothing was all the bottom of the mountain, Hashem speaking. We all received this huge prophecy. The Rambam says that when a person, a Navi, receives a prophecy, so it's like a near-death experience. There's the Isaiah called Gufoy. The Rambam talks about it. start to shake. It's almost like a some type of an epileptic uh, feeling of getting um, getting getting Nebua. So they said Penomus, uh, this, this, is, this is too hard. So Moshe Rabbeinu began to say, so Moshe Rabbeinu is a bigger prophet, and he was able to handle this Nevoa. Well, we spoke about a Chavez, I just want to just say this over very quickly, is then Hashem said to Moshe, Go up, come up the mountain, Alei Alei Ahara, climb up the mountain, um, and I want to give you stay on him. And um, this, the... Um, the Chumash says that uh, everything came from Hashem. 
He gave them luchas. What was the purpose? So I explained on Shabbos. What was the purpose of this Ten Commandments? <laughs> First of all, what was the purpose of saying them? It's not the Torah, and and it's just ten mitzvahs. It's, I mean, there's no kashras in there. There's no. Second of all, like why the the stones? What were the stones for? <laughs> like you can come down with the Sefer Torah, you know that makes more sense. After forty days and forty nights, maybe you know, what's shot in the stones? What was the st- what were these stones for? Given. Hmm? It was given. It was given. given. Most of them. No, it had been given to the most. Yeah. So what they needed in stone. So I explained that if you look at the psukim, it's very clear that this had nothing to do. It had nothing, to do, but this was not that there was. There's two parts to the whole event. Um, one part is receiving the Torah. That's that's beautiful. Can't live without it. Another part was not equally important. Was that there's a bris, there's a covenant between Hashem and the Jewish people. This covenant started with Abraham Avinu. Mantri Yitzhak, Yaakov. This was a bris, bris Avram. Av is brisi, Yaakov Eskar. Vagav is brisi, Av is brisi Yitzhak. Av is brisi Avram, right? That's all it's Eskar. It was a bris. A bris is a deal, a, a, a covenant. The pshat and the luchos were that you, a covenant is not balpet. A covenant is not oral, a covenant is written. Not only is it written, but it's carved in stone. So the, the point of the shte luchos Habris was that Moshe Rabbeinu received not just this is what I said now let's put it in writing he received a a, a edus luchas edus to the covenant to the covenantal relationship between God and the people and it says that right in the Chumash by the way it's not to say a chiddush it says that before um, Moshe went up up Hashem said to, to the people that said to Moshe tell the people atam um, amleches you are a nation of priests. Um, you are a goy kadosh. Um, your job in this world is to bring Hashem into it. My job in this world is to make you into a, an eternal nation. This was the covenant. It says the word brisi as well. Yeah. The whole Torah was, was the bris. And the bris, by the way, interestingly, kept on getting expanded because right before Mountain Torah, it says that Benasan Lahem is safer a bris. What was that? So Rashi says everything that happened from Adam Arishan until Mount Torah, that was, there was another Sefer Habris. Then the Aserah Sajibrais, that was the real sign, Shnei Luchais Habris. <clears throat> when Moshe Rabbeinu came down from Har Sinai and he saw that they built the eagle, so now they messed up, the Jews messed up because we broke the covenant. So he broke the Luchas. The, the Luchas are, are not worth the stone that they're carved into. <laughs> it, it, you, you broke your side, there's two sides to a covenant. So it's not about that they can, they didn't have Erev Avodah Zarah. Oh, they're gonna break the luchos like a kas. It's not. It's not. That's not what it is. It's. It's. There's a covenantal agreement. Ani ladoidi vidoidi li. You do your part. Right. Hashem says, "Na mircha hayoyim." I will make you into the summit. You'll make me into the summit. Atam amirenu. It, it was. It was all about the deal. So the breaking of the luchos was all about the deal. They didn't become exempt from keeping Torah at that time or keeping the Ten Commandments. They have to they have to keep everything, but they were Eingekrochen because th- there was no bris. So once there's no bris, we become a nation like all the other nations. In the, in the sense of, of eternity, that's Zach Yisrael Lohishat here, we become a nation like every other nation, nothing special about the Jewish people. So Moshe Rabbeinu went back up and on Yom Kippur Hashem said, Salachti Kidvarech. Okay, and the bris is reinstated. So Yom Kippur is a day of forgiveness, but not just a forgiveness for our Averas, it's a reinstatement or a re, um, reaffirmation of the bris. And new luchos. But this time the, this time the luchos with, were with different parameters. It was so luchos, ne luchos, Avon. Now you're going to have to do your part more. Uh, it's, it's not going to just be handed to you on a golden platter. Um, this is going to be your part more. You you make the luchos. You make the, the, the luchos themselves became a mice of shutafi, they became something uh, uh, which was partnered between Hashem and, and Moshe. Moshe brought the stones, I'll bring the writing, etc. So we have a new bris. It's interesting, by the way, that um, when they built, when we built the Mishkan in the desert, so 
Luchos for Shivrei Luchos Menachem Bar Nachas. That, in other words, that what it, what it showed was that the Pshat and Shuva, which is going to get us into Parak Zion, when we did Shuva, Hashem said Salach Tikid Varecha. It's not like it wasn't a new bris, Brit Chadasha. <laughs> it was the, the it was a, a reaffirmation. Um, Chaim's good work. A reaffirmation of the original bris. So you have new luchos, but the old luchos are also still kaim. So luchos, shiver luchos, menachem, bar nachem. That's that's an important uh, piece over here. It's also, what does it mean? It means to say that we are. The the bris means not what we do. It's what we are. What we do is Torah. What we are is the bris. A bris, bris, bris mila. You put out. You do on your bus. Uh, bris is what we are. Um, Torah is what we learn and what we do. So, so bris is much deeper, I believe, than, than Torah. And that's why the, the Gemara learns out from here is such an unusual halacha that Talmud Chacham, Avad Sheshachach Talmudai, Talmud Chacham forgets everything he learns. Right? He's complete dementia. So you still have to give him covet. Why? Because Luchais, for Shivrei Luchais, he's the Shivrei Luchais. So the shot is that. What does it mean? What's like? What kind of a drush? The shot is there is an example, a living example, of what's also important is not just what you know, but what you are. So, so this Talmud Chacham learned a lot of Torah. He was he is part of the bris. He's Shivrei Lucha, <coughs> meaning he. It's it's already the Atzmiusa Shel Shel Talmud Chacham. So therefore, um, that can never get lost. It can never get lost. By the way, just uh, just while I'm here, the the um, Arizal explains that um, all, all these pieces of broken Ten Commandments flew all over the place. <laughs> you know, pieces of stone all over the place, godly stone. So, okay, apparently Moshe Rabbeinu or the people, somebody picked them all up and put them into the Ara, like the, you know, and just let them lay down, lay around. You're not going to go find a piece of this in the in the uh, if you take a uh, you know, like a jeep ride into the Sinai. You know, you're not going to find these pieces of luchos. They picked them all up and they put them into the Aaron Kodesh. It was Kadosh. It was bad, so Kadosh. Um, but the Arizal says that that this this flying around of all of these stones, the, really the picking up of these stones will take place throughout all the generations. And these are all the Balei Tshuva that are coming back. The stones, every stone that flew here and flew there, flew everywhere, flew to, to Tibet and to to California, all, all of these stones are all being picked up over all the generations, the Arizal says, and being put into the Arn Kodesh. This is like the, 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 until Mashiach comes, all these stones get picked up on a symbolic level. Malonotsitis, um, that's what Malonotsitis means, is the Arizal. But um, just to finish the point again, that when Moshe Rabbeinu was already at the end of his life, he gave brachas, he gave klolois. He blessed the people, he cursed the people. He didn't bless them, he didn't curse them. He said to them like this, he said, if you're going to keep the bris, so then you're going to go to Eretz Yisrael, you're going to have a miraculous existence, you're going to win wars miraculously, which we have done. Um, one, one Jew is going to chase away 70 enemies the agriculture is going to be such that you're going to green the desert. It's going to have gishmech and be'itam. You're going to always have rain. Everything's going to be good. But it's not just a bracha. Everything's going to be good because I promised you there's a bris, there's a covenant here. And the covenant means that you will be an eternal people. And all the odds against you, you're still going to be. But if you don't keep the Torah, if you don't keep the Torah, meaning you don't keep the bris, so now, okay, um, even if you're keeping Torah, but you're not keeping the bris, so now you're a nation like every other nation. So you, you'll last 100 years, 500 years, 1,000 years. The Roman Empire lasted a long time, but eventually it goes away. So, it, But if you're part of the covenant, you'll never go away. And that's how Yisrael lo yishakir. So Moshe Rabbeinu says to him, and the bris is only in Ba'aretz, Eretz Yisrael, Kisavu Yelo Aretz, that's part of the bris, as Haaretz as Gar, that Moshe Rabbeinu was telling them, I'm, t- I'm telling you now, he wasn't just giving brachas and clothes, pulling out random mitzvahs and other He expanded on the bris. Kisavai el Haaretz. And those psukim and Ela divrei habris. 
It says Mahorsh. He said the words of the bris, Asher Karas. So this was the bris of Arvas Moyev. This, this, was, this was called the bris Moyev, the bris Arvas Moyev. So it's all, it's all very, very clear. And it's also very clear that Moshe Rabbeinu understood that if he himself doesn't go into Eretz Yisrael, that means he's not part of the bris. Part of the Torah, obviously, he is the Torah. But he, he's not part of that bris. I have to go to Eretz Yisrael. Why aren't I part of the bris? So the eternity of the Klag Yisrael, the Tikkun, and the, the, the Mashiach, all of those things, that's all bris stuff. That's all bris stuff. So what, what, what we have from all this, just before I go any further, is that there's really two dinim. One din is that we learn Torah, we keep Torah, we keep mitzvahs, we do, of course. Um, the other din is we're Jews. Like you can't, like it's possible to keep everything and you can, you know, Akub Shishavas Chayamisa. A guy could keep Shabbos too, but he's Chayamisa, you're not part of the bris. <laughs> like the, the uh, you're not allowed to do a bris mila on a guy. Usser. Usser. You're not allowed to do a bris mila on a guy. Um, except for maybe to practice. <laughs> you're not supposed to do a bris mila on a guy. Why? Because he's not part of the bris. What, what, are you, what are you paroling somebody into the bris? We should put it by your dough. Not allowed to teach Torah to, to, and when we do Hagba, so so the the Ramban says that that's a kiyum to Hagba every every time we read the Torah. That's a kiyum of Baruch Hashem Yalkim a Sefer Torah. You're picking up the Sefer Torah. What for? Nobody's learning it. You can hardly see it. You're running around, turning around circles. This is the bris. What we're picking up is that we are Jews. We're Jews. We're part of this eternal people. That's what the bris is. Torah is what we learn. I think Shuas, by the way, is more a young bris than a young Matan Torah. So it's a Matan Matan Torah, but it's not the young Matan Torah. Yeah, the the Matan Torah was a, was a was a process at the uh, Yom Kippur. It was a process, but the bris was given with the luchos, and even those luchos that didn't last, they're still in the Aron Kodesh. Really, I'm, I'm having trouble finding what's bris, what's in the bris that's not in the. The bris is you, you trouble because it's troubling. The, the the bris was constantly expanded upon, but the Chazanish says the follows. This, this, this is helpful. The Chazanish says, and I, I think I mentioned this on Shabbos. I don't remember that. Why are some things written in the Chumash in the, in the Sefer Torah and some things not? Like Torah Shabbat Peh. Why is it Torah Shabbat Peh? Or why isn't it all Torah Shabbat Peh? Like, why is there an oral part of this? Why isn't it written? But, so the Chazanish says that what's written was an addendum to the bris. Mispach. Uh, what's not written is Torah. It could be derisive, but it's not part of the bris. So whatever's written in a Torah is part of the bris. It's probably true, by the way, with the Nevi'im also. Um, meaning, Nevi'im ha'yubi'im mitzrayim kiflaim kiyotim mitzrayim. Be'yisrael kiflaim kiyotim mitzrayim. Hundreds of thousands of the Nevi'im. But there are certain Nebuah, Yishayahu, Yerbiyahu, probably, probably not everything that they said, which is part of the bris. So what's Tarish of Iksav is part of the bris. Menaf Gemina. is that if we don't keep this, we, we cease to exist as a people. So the whole Nevi'im is all about Tshuva and the Gula, nothing else. It's all about the bris. That's an Afgamina. Naf is are we violating the bris, we cease to exist. And then we cannot, huh? they're, they're, they're keeping the whole Torah, as it's written. If we are keeping the Torah, we, like, we can, it's because of the oral Torah. Right. So we're slipping it in. So they weren't in the bris to begin with. Let's stop. <laughs> uh, Christians also, uh, you know, some of them keep. For the Goyim, there was a different bris by Noah. There was a bris of the Shev Mitzvah mm-hmm. by Noah. They're not part of the bris. They can keep whatever they want. They can keep the whole Torah about also. It's just we know it's silly because we know that's not the shot. But, but, if, if it's, but it's not a question of derice or derab butter. It's this is the this is the the document. There might be an oral understanding that goes with the document, so that's the oral law. But there, there's not no enough kavita lebaisa. In other words, of what you do, the only enough kavita is in uh, what it is. Is it, the, is it the bris? Is it not the bris? Now um, let's let's leave that all. Lay the evan and lay basa. Could you explain that? So let's go back to this. The idea of this is really how, how we, thank you. This is really how we um, hook up to the Nefesh Achaim here. They they heard the Nevoah, but they couldn't handle it. So what does that mean? Why couldn't they handle it? But 
So, um, and this is really what we're talking about here, at the end of Tezai and the beginning of Yudzai, that <coughs> as the words of Hashem come into this world, it's like a, you know, you know they say like with the pilot, the hardest part is landing, yeah? Everybody applauds at the landing. Uh. Yeah. Even though the pilot told me that I don't know where they're applauding, it's all automatic. <laughs> you right away. <laughs> so, okay. They're applauding the machine, the computer, <laughs> what are they applauding? But, but okay, conventionally, um, this was the could. So you could fly in the air for 15 hours. And that's not the such a big trick like landing. So the Dvar Hashem getting from the highest worlds, hitting the ground in this world is a very, very crash experience. It's a very difficult experience. And apparently, um, Moshe Rabbeinu was able to do it fully, and Klai Yisrael was not able to do it. And the reason was because it was too hard. You have to be able to open up your neshama, let's say, to that experience. Which, we, which I, want, I want to learn what that means. I'm, I'm not, I'm not so, but what, what it means is, what, what the words are in any case, the framework of it is that the, if we're, we're talking about Torah, we're talking about Torah coming from the highest spiritual place and coming down into the world as we know it. So this is not a smooth transition, necessarily. Uh, so you have to be holding. To, you have to have Leva Basar, which we'll explain, in order for that to, to, to happen. But what we need to understand is Nevoah. Nevoah is, is we're machalak between Kol, Moshe Daber, Vash, Elikim Yonenu, but Kol. So Kol is, it's coming. That's Hashem's part. Dibor is where I could take that energy of Hashem and articulate it into Dibor. Moshe Daber, Elikim Yonenu, but Kol. Everybody heard the Kol Shoifer. Everybody was heard the Kol Ois. Brock him, uh, we say it on Friday night, Kol Hashem Bahadur, Kol Hashem. What's Hashem there? Shoi Bar Razem, Bar Yishab, Bar Hashem, Zarz, Yavonai. There's a lot of Kol Hashem, seven Kol Hashem, of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Kol Hashem, 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 Interesting. Kol Hashem, Kol Simcha, Kol Hashem, Kol Kala. These are Kol Hashem, of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Zoi Chetan, Kol Hashem. But to our, interpret that means that I'm taking it, I'm integrating it, and now I'm being able to articulate it. That's already Kol Gufay Mizdazeya, the Rambam says, that the Navi would go into a coma. It's not an easy thing to be a Navi because you're, 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 that's a landing. That's, that's, where the, um, that's where the transition is actually taking place. There's a transition taking place as it lands. And they weren't, they weren't capable of that transition because of their problem with the lathe. So let's explain it more. The, 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 the Chiddush I want to say today in the next 10 minutes is that what we need to understand is by Matan Torah, by Navua, and for that matter, every day, um, what's really happening is we're connecting from the coal and we're connecting it into this world. Or is the essence of also the bris, but the essence of prophecy, the essence of is being able to bring the Devar Hashem into this world. That's what it's all about. That's what the Karbanas are about. That's what Mishkan's about. That's what Mikdash is about. Shechina. Everything is all about that. It's all about taking... It's a very esoteric idea. But this is the essence of being Jewish. Mamash. The essence of being Jewish is not so much doing this, doing that, putting on tefillin. If you don't do that, it doesn't begin. Not even... Not even uh, it's not, nothing begins. But it's, it's all taking the Devar Hashem and bringing it into this world. So Navi was able to do that. We can do it. That's what has to be done. Um, let's just learn one, one sentence here, and I just want to explain. In Parakeet of Zion, the Rukhani Velozha says, In the very Indian, I want to explain the Indian, Hiskashrus hagimel bechinus naran echad bechavera. Behu yisoyed veikar, Indian at Shuvah. What an amazing sentence. He said, I'm, I want to explain to you uh, I, I just, by the way, I'm, I'm saying this as if it's easy. I was like breaking my head over this. <laughs> what, what does this mean? I, I want to explain to you the hiskashrus, the connect, that connection between nefesh ruach neshama, v'hu yisoyd ve'ikir inyan atshuva, which is all what shuva is. What, what is he even talking about? You would think he explains it further, but he doesn't. <laughs> just says that. Um, 
so this is that's all we get from him. So, so what we learned in the past, in the past few prakim, was that nefesh um, ruach neshama. Um, so Chazal give an example, a metaphor, to somebody blowing glass through a windpipe. So you have the guy who's blowing, right? You have the pipe, and then you have the glass. Like, there's like three stages. The glass would be nefesh, the pipe is obviously ruach, the wind, and then neshama is where it's coming from. <laughs> And the Nefesh Chaim points out not to think that the neshama, that this person doesn't fly through the pipe and end up on the other end. It's his wind that's coming. So, so too, he explains is the neshama. The neshama is sitting by Hashem. Our neshama is not necessarily here, the, the whole neshama. The neshama is sitting by Hashem. Vayipach ba'apav nishmas chaim. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu blew from this neshama into the person. So it's like the ruach went through the ruach ended up in nefesh. Balatanya adds that the nefesh itself, the part that we have, um, the nefesh, has two parts to it. It has the nefesh habahamas and nefesh holikis. So the top part, if you will, I don't know if it's top bottom, I'm just saying to make it easier. The top part is holikis. Like it means, <coughs> I'll just review what it means, that being alive is not having a neshama and having a neshama is not being alive. It's not to, I mean, rabbits are alive, trees are alive, uh, squirrels are alive. Lions, tigers, bears, they're all alive, they're all breathing, they're all, you know, um, maybe talking maybe, is, is the distinction. But the, being alive is not the point. The point is that first you're alive, and then th that's nefesh habahamas. That's just living like an, like an animal. Like an animal's alive, you're alive. And so what? Uh, so we're alive. I mean, that's a miracle, but it's just um, dealing with our health and all this. That's creating a vessel for something bigger, which is the neshama, to be able to accept it. Alive is good. It's, a, it's important to be alive. Because <laughs> 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 no, if you're alive, so then you could be a vessel for... But ushmartemus v'nishmartem oides laf shoiseichem. That's the mitzvah. Shmir's hanefesh. You watch your health, and by watching your health and taking care of the body, now you can be a vessel for what's supposed to come into it. Or you cannot. You can just have nothing to do with what's coming into it. You can just be alive like a rabbit. Like, so, so being alive itself is not unto itself, just makes you into an animal. So it's just a biological a biological phenomenon that we're alive. More intelligent being, but at the end of the day, we're just alive. But by um, hooking into the, the, the windpipe of HaKadosh Baruch Hu and being a receptacle for the neshama that is blowing into us, which will only blow, loya mesim to hallelujah. This can't happen if you're dead. It only happens if you're alive. So, but if you're alive, so now you have a possibility of being otherwise like you're just alive. Like you take a, a you know, like a light bulb. So, a light bulb. But if it doesn't, if it's not connected in. So nothing is happening. Like nothing, nothing's happening. Nothing's flowing. It's there. It's a light bulb. You pay money for it, but it's it's not it's not there. Nothing is there. So when we talk about nefesh ruach neshama, nefesh Chaim explains nefesh Chaim. He explains over and over again that that's what we're taught. That's what's important to him to understand that it's a hishtalshulus or hiskashrus as he's calling it now. There's a hiskashrus, a connection like a chain. So you have nefesh, ruach, nisham. Okay? And that's the way we should live. Going back to Har Sinai for a minute, if that was in perfect order, we would have been able to hear all the Ten Commandments. We would have heard the whole thing. Because um, then we're Caleb for, for the Debar Hashem. But being that it's like, you know, the pipe is not completely aligned, you know, so we're getting a little bit. We could hear two. It's not... Moshe Rabbeinu is Bas Baklari Abir, perfectly connected. So it, um, the Navua is having, I'm just saying as a Mashal, being perfectly connected to the piece on top of you. Nefesh, Ruach, Neshama. This is esoteric. Well, let's try to bring it literally down to earth you know, for a minute. Uh, Moshe Rabbeinu was connected. Kla Yisrael, we're not, we, just, we just got out of, we, you know, a couple, of days, a couple of weeks ago we were slaves in Egypt. 
take it easy on us. Um, we're not holding yet by hearing this kind, like having this kind of experience, nor were any of the great Naveen. They were Ms. Dazea Kogufo. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't so simple to, to make this landing into the world. So that was the difference between the Navu of Moshe, the Navu of all the Naveem, and the Navu of Klai Yisrael, yeah? It was, that was the big deal. How lined up were they? So, says the Nefesh here, Navira Indian, let's explain, Iskashus HaGimel Bechinais, tying up, or let's say hooking up, or let's say lining up, the three parts, Nefesh, Ruach, Neshama, Echad Bechaveroi, Need to understand who you say be ikar in not shuva. That's what shuva is. So let's explain it. We're all hooked up. And then we do an Avera. <coughs> Machalo Shabbos. So you know what happens is like this. We've we've just we've just um, you know, here you have this light, this, you know, mouthpiece, this oxygen piece, which is blowing by Yipach Bahap of Nishmaschai. Hashem is blowing um, the neshama into us every second. And then when we go against it, we're like this, because there's an instruction manual as to how to keep this connected. Is it a leak? <laughs> Is it a leak, yeah. Misaligned. Misaligned so far. Let's talk about the leaks in a minute. But there is a misalignment. It's just not getting, you know, like, why should you give us 100 examples of this from the physical world, right? Just not. <laughs> It's just not getting not plugged in well. Um, there's a bit of a short circuit. There's a uh, who knows what. You know, the pipe is stuffed up. There can be a lot of things, but the point is, you're not getting this energy. You don't necessarily feel it because you're alive, but you're really dead. Because um, from a spiritual point of view, that if you don't line yourself up with this. You're just not alive. That's called, by the way, kares. Kares means, he says here in Parakid Ches, that kares means that this part is not connected to this part. That's the cutoff punishment. It's not a punishment you did to yourself. Certain things like, you don't, you don't do bris milah, you, 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 you don't eat chametz on, uh, you eat chametz on pesa. So you, you're, cut, you're, you're misaligning the whole thing. What is tshuva im ken? Tshuva is realigning so it's not just, um, so we talk about children, we talk about, well, you have to regret what you did, you have to accept the future, you have to say, be doing, all true. Those are the tools of how to align it. But that's not the alignment. The alignment, the, the goal of everything is to get back this energy so you're flowing, you're, you're living now a completely different way. There's even ways to get Navua without doing this, like Bilam, you know. You can get Navua from an easy source, there's nothing to him. You can be on the Hamar, you can do, you're still getting Nebuah. But, but, but what we're trying to do here, and it's, a, it's such an esoteric concept that it's so important, so I'm not sure why it's so esoteric, but it is. It's, a, it's just so important for us to, break, to wrap our brains around this idea that if, if you want to be a firm Jew, the whole idea is to be able to align your life with the, the Hashem blue life into our nostrils. That's all, that's the whole, that's the whole thing. Otherwise, if you're over here, you're alive. You could even be a spiritual alive. You can even be a good person, right? I'm, I'm watching, you know, like I had the great schuss that in my uh, um, machsan, so uh, a cat had kittens. <laughs> so, thank you. <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's an amazing thing, you know, it's, it's a cat. First of all, where the heck is the father? Completely right away, nowhere around. <laughs> Where is he? Like, unbelievable. Mother cat is sitting there outside the machsad. And he'll look at this today. A whole day, a whole night, just guarding. Don't touch my kittens. <laughs> just, just like looking. I looked through my kitchen window to see. <laughs> and like, like we have a staring war, me and the mother. You know, <laughs> it's like crazy there. They don't even blink. You know, I, I, so you know that this is um, this is a spiritual cat. It's not a spiritual cat. It's a cat. But it, this is this is Hashem put into the nature to the bria that a mother is a mother. I said to my granddaughter, I was showing her this. I said, a mother is a mother. This is natural. This is natural. This is not called hooking up or aligning. That's just natural. That's a natural thing. 
that, 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 that this could be a Jew, a non-Jew, a cat. It doesn't make any difference. Hmm? Nefesh Abbas. So exactly yeah. right. So that's not, that's not called hooking up. Hooking up and realigning means that I'm doing, I'm living my life in the type of a way that I'm connected to above. I, I have to tell you one more thing, I, and I told you about my cats. That, that, um, my cats. That's all my <laughs> wife. <laughs> tell my wife that, you know, Zach Hunt and Guttel, you <laughs> They're just going to become Such ugly and, <laughs> and, and, and bothersome like every other cat. Another cute little kid, but um, but I was last week Thursday. There wasn't a year. I was I had a meeting in Herzliya in the um, Sharon Hotel in the business lounge, <laughs> and um, beautiful overlooking the, uh, the the Mediterranean Sea. <coughs> beautiful and a big sport, which you might know better than me. Um, in this country, as is in LA, is uh, kite surfing. So mm -hmm. kite surfing is like really, really cool because um, you know these big kites and hooked up with these ropes and you hold onto the ropes and tie it around your waist and then you're, you're flying on a surfboard like 30, it looked to me like 30, 40, 50 miles an hour, you know, and like just unbelievable, even against the current you're going, you're hooked up to the Ruach, get it? Like <laughs> the, 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 the shot, the shot is that um, you know, you could be um, windsurfing, then you're like just in the air. That's nice, but no cashier to the, to the, to the world. You can be water surfing, it's no cashier to the air. air. <clears throat> or you could be kite surfing. It's just so, I thought to myself, I said to the people that I was with, I said like, um, you know the famous story of the, uh, the Blush of Rebbe, the Blush of Rebbe, some point in the Holocaust, so in order to escape from something, you have to jump over. There was like a big uh, um, abyss, a big uh, gigantic uh, uh, pit that was maybe too far for a person to jump. So, like, you know, four meters, five meters, you can't jump over this bullshit. Rebel was an old man. And um, he said, oh, we have to jump, we have to jump, let's take a chance. You know, normally you're going to fall right into this hole. And he jumped and he made it across, so the, the chassid is with him, and then on the other side he's afraid to jump. Could I jump like the rabbit jump? So he said to him, look, if you're hooked up from on top, you don't fall down. <laughs> so uh, so the, the uh, story is that he threw him his gartel <laughs> across the thing, and the chassid jumped to him. I'm, I'm like kite surfing. <laughs> it, it was like, like it was just so inspiring, just this idea that they're hooked up to the ruach, just like such a unbelievable thing, and they're like not clear. Are they flying? Are they surfing? Like, are they on the water? Are they not on the water? Sometimes yes, sometimes not. It's like something in between. You know, it's it's um, there's this connection. I'm just saying a muscle. I'm not saying that those were particularly spiritual people on those surfboards. <laughs> but uh, I can't can't judge them from the window. But um, one thing's for sure, they're strong people because this is not as easy as it looks. You know, as is in the world of spirituality, it's not as easy as it looks. So the idea is to be able to 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 connect. So the idea of Hasashalom Kares or any Avera um, is when you're when you're cutting that rope, so you're not getting a kesher any longer to the ruach that's coming to you. And tshuva, the tremendous chiddush of tshuva that you see, Moshe Rabbeinu went back on Har Sinai and Yom Kippur, but so salachti kidvarecha, is this realignment. So maybe like a navi or even a tzaddik, you know, when he's when he's talking, I've seen this. I don't know if this is what it is, but I, I've seen old tzaddikim um, that they look like they're gonna just maybe the ninety or older, you know, they they just look like they're gonna fall over, you know, like they, they hardly have to go off the top. And then they get up to give a shear, and unbelievable, like, you know, it's they're talking in a full voice, they're jumping around, but like, the, the, the shot is all of a sudden they're being hooked up to a higher source, and it's a completely different source of energy. It's fresh, it's Ranan, it's Asis, it's a, it's a whole new level of energy that you can have when you're, when you're, when you're hooked up to the, uh, to the top. So this is what, uh, you know, Tzadikim, Neviim, this is what prophecy is. Prophecy is being able to, to hook up that way and to make your life this way. And in Avera, 
is pulling away. So let me just tell you one other complicated thing here. Um, and then we'll leave it till Thursday. Um, see, when we daven, so if you look at the like these um, Kabbalah Sidurim, you ever see them? I want to know. So um, it says on the top what you're doing, like what's happening now, background information. So when you say, um, like the brachas in the morning, mm -hmm. so that's, mm -hmm. there's four worlds. So that's the world of Asiya. When you say Tzuvita Zimra, in the world of Yitzira. When you say Kriyashma and brachas, you say in the world of Bria, <coughs> and then you the world of Atsilus. Okay, so I explained this a dozen times, that Atsilus is the highest world, and when you're down in Shmonasre, Eitzel Hashem, you're standing in front of Hashem. That's what Shmonasre, you're working your way up from the world of Gashmias. So you're starting off and you're saying, well, I'm walking, well, I'm breathing, well, I'm seeing, listen to the to the rooster crow, you know, you're all this um, uh, real physical stuff, carbonus, very physical stuff. Then you get to Psuki de Zimra. Psuki de Zimra is like another, a segue into the next world. You're singing, singing, music, um, it's already a different thing than just like, oh, I could see, oh, I could, I could sing. That's already a different uh, level, a different talent. It's much more adin than, than, um, than, than birchas hashachar. Meshim Tzadigavir, right? Asher Yotzar, as Adam. You know, that's base. It's good. you got to start somewhere. And then you go into the world of Bria, which is Kriya Shema, which you're enveloping your whole Shema Yisrael, Hashem Lugeno, Hashem Echad. There's nothing else but Hashem in that world. Bircha is Kriya Shema, Shema. And then you can finally stand in front of Hashem and say, Shemonasri, that's the world of Atzil. So the Kabbalah Sidurim, okay, you are now entering from the world of Asiya to the world of Yitzira to the world of Bria, standing in front of Atzilus. That's Shimon Esrei's Atzilus. And by the way, uh, as I said a number of times, the Rav Zechai says, Chazor's Hashatz is even higher. It's even higher than, than Atzilus. Because there you're not even talking, just listening. But more, more spiritual level. So here's what's interesting halachically. This is what I want to bring out here. That every time you change worlds, <laughs> Like it's like the atmosphere, the stratosphere, the troposphere. You know, like every time you change um, worlds, you say kaddish, right? In other words, you finish um, the first part, the brachas karbanas, you say kaddish. You finish uh, yishtabach, yishtabach belongs to psugi de zibra. You say right? You say kaddish. <coughs> Some say kaddish, chasim say kaddish even before. No, but so. Kaddish means that why is Kaddish is like the um, the segue to another world. Yiskada al the Yiskada Shmei Rabbi, you're getting to a higher. <coughs> you're being ma'ala yourself and Hashem making the connection. So this is the same connection that we're talking about here. It's interesting that not only you don't say Kaddish, there is explains this. Not only do you not say Kaddish between Shema and Shmon Esrei, which I should be like the real one. Now, you are now entering into the world of Atsilas, put your oxygen masks on, you're, you're in the, the world of Atsilas. Not only you don't say Kaddish, but you're not allowed to be Mavsik at all. Then Gula Lutzfila. Like, that's like the worst place to, to, to talk, to be Mavsik, even with Kaddish. Why? Because there's never, as I read the place, well, there's never a, 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 there's never a break between Neshama and Ruach there's just the break between Ruach and Nefesh. There's a Nefesh, Ruach, Neshama. There's no Hefzik between Hashem and His Ruach. He keeps blowing into the pipe. The problem is that we get misaligned. So whether you divide into three, divide into five, and it all works out, it all formulates exactly. But the, the, or and even into the ten spheros. But the, but it's all the same thing. But what it, what it comes down to is just different aspects. Of and what it comes down to is where is the misalignment? It's not Ben Gula Latfila, because Ben Gula Latfila. Um, it's it's there's there's a constant connection. The words of the Zayar is um, that that Atzilus and Bria Rayim Zelazet Rayim like Rayim Ahuvim Rayim Zelazet they they they're inseparable. They're inseparable. So that's why interesting. That's why you don't say a Kaddish. You think it would be the ultimate Kaddish. No, it's not a, it's not a Kaddish. You don't say Kaddish to be that Chazar Sashatz either. Then you say Kaddish and you start your descent back to. Um, Tachanun, back to Sukhda Zimra, Ashri of Elysion, Alenu Shabayach, which is back to the world of Bria, then finally back to Karbanas, Pita Makaris, Atzara Atzipar, and you're back to where you started from. 
So, so the whole davening is like this, but it's all about this. What uh, uh, it's all about this connection that takes place going up and then going down with the like a pyramid with with the kadeshim in the middle. So it's a new understanding of Averis, and it's a new. There's one line: new understanding of Averis and new understanding of tshuva, because the new understanding of Averis is not, oh yeah, I did something wrong. It's it's a violation which causes a disconnect. You see, if, if um, let's say somebody uh, you know violates uh, their relationship with their wife or their wife with their husband, so it's not just like, okay, you did something wrong. It's a disconnect, right? Everybody understands that probably, right? Just disconnected. Boom. <coughs> what happened? We can't even talk anymore. We're not connecting anymore. Like, it's a disconnect. If you're really bad, you get chorus. <laughs> uh, but when, what we're talking about in Avera is a disconnect, but then there's tshuva. And tshuva is a reconnect or a realignment where, once again, the Devar Hashem comes through us. And then we can be zelcha. It's about entire. Okay, we'll leave it to that. Good job, Tim. Is it a physical thing or how is it like this? There's different types, or depending on how far. Why does Marv want the Kaddish? Why does Marv have Kaddish? Because you're not climbing those worlds, Marv. 